Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we will be pulse TIG welding. And the plan was to uh, pulse TIG weld these tubes and show you guys a video of it, but I messed them up really bad. So it got to a point where I didn't even turn the camera on to record because I was just learning stuff or trying different things out and just doing a all-around terrible job. <laughs> so yeah, there's one weld that started to be okay, I guess. And uh, yeah, then I decided no more uh, tubes because I'm not going to miter a tube and then totally mess it up. So I just started practicing on scrap steel. And uh, yeah, around this time, this is around when uh, things started to make a little sense. So I pretty much spent the whole weekend trying to figure it out. And uh, I think I have a pretty good understanding of it now. So I'll show you guys. Oh yeah, so uh, this is um, the sleeve that covers the argon hose. And I actually uh, removed part of it near the end. And uh, I found that to be a lot easier to hold the torch. The base setting I'm using is around uh, 60 to 80 amps. But uh, really, um, just like regular welding, you're using the foot pedal to kind of tweak your amperage. And uh, this little switch here turns on this machine, turns a uh, pulsar on. And then we have the uh, pulse frequency knob, the pulse amps, and pulse time on. Alright, so here's the settings I ended up with. I got uh, my pulse frequency set to around 1 pulse per second, my amps set to uh, 10%, and um, pulse time on to around 25%. So here's what these settings look like. Uh, pulse frequency is how many times the torch gets a burst of amps per second. Pulse amps is how many amps you're getting when it's not bursting. And uh, pulse time on is how long your burst lasts. Alright, so now let's turn pulse frequency down all the way. And now you can see that it's uh, it's pulsing a little bit more than before. It was already pretty low uh, on the base setting. Alright, now we'll turn pulse frequency up. And you can see a big difference. A seizure inducing difference. So that's uh, pulse frequency. Now back to base settings and let's turn amps all the way down. And so what's happening here is when the pulse is not on its high end of amperage, the low end is really low. You can see when it gets uh, darker, that's the low end. So now we're going to turn pulse amps up. And now the low end is still pretty bright. You see what's happening here? so. Uh, that's what's also known as background current. Alright, so back to base settings. We are now going to turn pulse time on all the way down. So now when you see it's getting a burst of amperage, it doesn't last that long. We'll turn it all the way up, or actually up to 50%. And you can see now that it lasts longer. Alright, now we're going to lay a bead in this uh, joint. So I was like practicing this stuff for two whole days as I was saying and I thought I had everything figured out. Like this was the moment where I'm going to stick this rod in here, I'm going to do everything just like I was before and it's going to work perfectly just like before. So here I am uh, getting a puddle 
and immediately things start going wrong. And I'm like, why is this happening? I, I used these exact same settings before. Why is this, uh, why is the rod balling up so badly? So after thinking about it for a bit, I realized that it was the tubes. I ground the corners of the tubes to make them more presentable for the video. And what I actually ended up doing, or what that did, is it made a deeper um, joint, a deeper gap there. And so when the rod is sitting in there, uh, the heat is building up more. And that is all it took for the, um, for the rod to ball up more. So to test this theory, I grabbed a flat piece of metal with the exact same settings and I tried it on that. And uh, once the puddle gets formed up, you can see now that uh, the rod is melting away and it's going into the puddle just like it should. A uh, little bit of balling, but nothing like before. So what I learned here is that uh, it, you just can't assume that the same settings are going to work. You're going to change them depending on what you're welding. So the first thing I did was I changed the pulse amps to 50%. And so what that's going to do is it's going to keep a puddle formed. And with the puddle formed, it's going to uh, keep the rod kind of oozing into the puddle. As you can see here, it's uh, working very well. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I've got the rod very low. Uh, it's almost like just laying flat there. So that's another thing you're going to want to do. And uh, you're also going to want to let the heat build up enough before you're, you start moving. Uh, the last thing I'm doing is, and this is actually pretty important, is I'm moving the torch at a constant pace. And so what that's doing is, when the amperage is on the low end, um, the background current is actually eating away at the rod. And so when it gets its burst, it's not... Uh, balling up because it's already kind of oozing into the puddle. Okay, that's it for this week. Thank you guys for dropping in. Next week we're going to weld some 4130 steel tubing that I got from McMaster Car. And uh, yeah, that'll be a lot closer to real tubing and we'll see how this pulse thing works on that. Please drop in for that and I'll see you guys later.